This is Martin Sloboda from Bratislava, Slovakia, and uh, today I'm going to talk about Danube wines. Now, feel free to open a nice bottle of wine while watching. It doesn't have to be from here. Now, let's have a look at the geography here first, so that you know where it's all located. So I took a physical map of uh, Central Europe over here, where you see the source of the Danube highlighted in blue flows through southern Germany, uh, eastwards towards Austria, and later on it enters Slovakia, and finally uh, in the picture Hungary. The highlighted area in red is the area I'm going to talk about. Uh, it only has some hundred square miles, so rather unique in its uh, rather small size. Now, unlike many other uh, regions, this one is very diverse and it's subdivided into many other uh, smaller micro regions. You see the Austrian part to the right, the Slovak part which is not highlighted yet. Here um, you will see um, the wine regions of Slovakia uh, in different colors. Uh, Bratislava is in the extreme uh, southwest of the country uh, on the Austrian border and um, here I have a close-up uh, where you see Bratislava here in the corner and the different winemaking regions actually meeting there. Um, back to Austria now. Um, when we go from the west, there's a beautiful valley where the, the Danube cuts through the mountains. It's called the Wachau Valley. It's not huge, but it's incredibly beautiful. Uh, it has only the length of some 25 miles. The slopes here are among the steepest in the world, and uh, unlike along the Mosel, famous Mosel River in Germany, uh, there are stone walls here, as you can see here in the picture. Um, the stone walls were built um, already in the Middle Ages, and they're, they're still standing there. One of the most famous wineries is in this beautiful chateau. It's called Domaine Wachau, one of the most famous wineries actually in the world. Now, in the past, most of those vineyards were owned by the church already in the Middle Ages. The beginning of the valley is marked by this enormous abbey called Melk Abbey. Down the stream, at the other end, the valley is guarded by the Gutweig uh, Abbey. Uh, both of them, even today, uh, produce superb wines. Now, this area is famous mainly for white wines, uh, Riesling, dry one, as well as the Grüneveltliner, which is um, a famous local variety. Now, don't think that it's all only historic. There are some fine examples of contemporary architecture, some great wineries. This is... Uh, FX Pichler winery, which is one of the most famous in the area. Towards the east, just before Vienna, there's another enormous abbey called the uh, Kloster Norburg Abbey, where they've been making wine since the 1100s. Now, Vienna itself is a winemaking city, along with Bratislava, the only one, with some 2,000 acres of vineyards directly in the city. Uh, the locals love to go for hikes there and taste the wines um, right in the vineyards. Um, famous for this part of Europe are the so-called Heurige, little taverns that you find all over where you can taste uh, the local wines. It's quite uh, a cultural thing and uh, the Austrians love to go out uh, every weekend like this. Further east and just south of the river, there's quite a big lake called the Lake Neusiedl, around which there are more winemaking regions famous for also red wines and sweet wines, not only whites. It's because this area is considerably uh, warmer than the Fajau uh, River Valley. And we're getting closer to Bratislava, Slovakia already. So when you look at this picture, you see uh, the city center with the castle. 
Until the 18th century, even those steep slopes uh, below the castle were covered with vineyards, and so were the hills where you see the residential area behind. Even today, there are vineyards in the city center, actually. When you look at this picture of the presidential palace, in the top right up there, you will see vineyards even today. Bratislava, just like Vienna, has some 2,000 acres of vineyards. Now, the other picture uh, that I'm going to show you over here is from that very spot, looking back at the castle and uh, at the river. Uh, so, as you can see, it's uh, right in the city center. In the Middle Ages, it, actually for 700 years, it was the main uh, trade in Bratislava. And um, the old town is full of such beautiful uh, historic courtyards from the 15-1600s where actually the wine was made right in town in the courtyards there were wine presses uh, just like you see over here in the picture where they were making wine and then it went down underneath these buildings into the cellars. Now not many people know that Bratislava was actually called Pressburg until 1919 as you can see here in this here in this ad and it was the place where the first well we could say champagne but in reality sparkling wine the méthode classique was made in the world outside France and even today there are some great sparkling wines in Slovakia just outside Bratislava there are some uh, picturesque winemaking towns uh, as you can see over here dating from the Middle Ages and Slovaks love to spend time in their little taverns in the countryside meeting their friends tasting local traditional food and wine with it or they enjoy picnics right in the vineyards with some campfires good music and of course great wine, local cheese. Uh, the area is uh, very lush green as you can see here in this picture that's uh, just outside Bratislava. Uh, vineyards uh, right underneath uh, the what they call the small Kapete mountains. Some wine region right outside Bratislava is dotted with uh, castles. Unlike on the Austrian side where it was abbeys that owned the vineyards in Slovakia it was noble families, notably the Palfi family, which built this beautiful chateau uh, in the 1200s, and uh, even today it produces some of the West best wines in the country. Don't think it's all historic only. There are some wonderful modern wineries, like the Alesco winery over here, whose owners collect art. In fact, it's a gallery inside, and they happen to own the largest private collection of Andy Warhol's works in the country, because why? Andy Warhol was of Slovak origin. Being a nobleman, of course, you need a castle for every occasion. So this was the Palfi's summer residence, while over here the Redstone Castle was more of a fortress which, by the way, houses the largest wine cellars in Central Europe. Now, as you can see, they're enormous, over 100 meters long and 10 meters wide. The small Carpathian wine route finishes after 40 miles at the famous Smolenica Castle, owned by the same Palfi family. This is one of the few regions in the world where you can make ice wines, which are rather exquisite because you need minus seven degrees Celsius or 20 degrees Fahrenheit or below to be able to produce it. So what makes this small region of a hundred miles so unique in the world is the mere fact that you can produce all of these varieties of wines, be it sparkling, crisp whites, full bodied reds, or naturally sweet and even exquisite ice wines. So, I hope you learned many new things and you enjoyed watching this as much as I did creating it and tasting these lovely wines. So, cheers! Post in Austrian and Nazdrave in Slovak! Oh.